And we have full screen there? Yes. Very good. Okay, uh, the Aquarian Renaissance and that is approaching, that is about to unfold for us. And Renaissance, just get my mouse working here just a moment, it keeps disappearing into our remote monitor. Okay. It's a special way to drag the mouse back from the remote monitor into the laptop monitor. And it's very esoteric. <laughs> uh, bear with me for one second. The second touch screen. Ah, touch screen works, that's better. All right then. So, Renaissance means rebirth, revival, renewal. And Renaissances appear periodically every several centuries. These, uh, these rebirths are determined by astrological and ray cycles. And so we have incarnating groups of souls that emerge from the seven ray ashrams within these cycles. The most recent well-known Renaissance is the European Renaissance of the 15th and 16th centuries but there have been many others before that and there'll be many others to come at various stages in history. During that most recent Renaissance, we saw the amazing uh, incarnation of many fourth ray souls who expressed art, beauty, music, philosophy, architecture. And that Renaissance also spanned the year 1425, which was the start of a third ray cycle, which is still going very long third ray cycle. So the next Renaissance will most likely emerge after 2025. And there are several factors which determine this Aquarian re Renaissance, as I call it. First of all, the externalization of the hierarchy. The hierarchy have not appeared amongst humanity since the ancient Atlantean war nearly 4 million years ago. And there are several references in the blue books to this, which uh, are great references for the confirmation of my uh, time spans that I give in the hidden history work. Hierarchy, DK tells us, were forced to withdraw from human contact at that time. So now we are approaching the 2025 conclave where there is a decision to be made by the masters about their timing of the reappearance. And at the latest, I've worked out, as I'll explain later, that will be between 2080 and 2100. But depending upon urgency of world events, the hierarchy may decide to return much sooner. Then secondly, we have the cycle of the fourth ray, the main ray conditioning humanity, the ray of harmony through conflict, of harmony, beauty, and art, slowly coming into manifestation from 2025 onward, we are told. Humanity will then trace, DK tells us, the source of that mysterious revelation called beauty. And he tells us that the fourth ray is the way of the seeker, the searcher, and the sensitive reflector of beauty. Thirdly, through the influence of this fourth ray and the seventh ray of organization, there will be new forms of art, music, education, healing, and science that will emerge. A new world religion synthesizing all faiths, a global financial system will emerge uh, and a universal currency, barter and exchange will be reestablished upon earth. The fear of death will be eliminated before the year 2100, which is virtually just a, a few decades away, of course. Development of the United Nations will continue and it is a fourth ray entity. So what is the astrology behind this determining of a new Aquarian Renaissance? First of all, Saturn entered the first decade of Aquarius in 2020 on its 30-year cycle. 
Uh, and then, of course, we had the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in Aquarius in December 2020, right on the solstice, in fact, 20th of the 12th, 2020. The first of three conjunctions in air signs for the next 40 years. This is called the Airy Trigon. Uh, it will land in Libra in 2040, in Gemini 2060 to complete the first trigon. And then a new trigon will start in Aquarius uh, in 2080, Libra 2100 and Gemini 20, 2120. So this air trigon starting in Aquarius hasn't occurred since 1226 to 1405 AD, which was the so-called early Renaissance. That was the seed for the big Renaissance that came later in Europe. Now, Jupiter is the sole ruler of Aquarius. Aquarius, the water bearer who pours forth for those who thirst. Saturn is the mind. Jupiter is the heart and the Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions represent a synthesis of mind and heart in many ways. They are really such a major conditioning of the consciousness of humanity with their 20-year cycles. Saturn and Jupiter indicate a new renaissance and help pave the way for the 2025 conclave. They open the door in many ways to the 2025 conclave and they will usher in Aquarius astronomically uh, that occurs astronomically or the sun precesses astronomically into Aquarius in less than one century, 2117 AD, 93 years in fact. Not far away at all, is it? <clears throat> and so will the externalization be closer to 2080 or 2100 than 2025? one has to think about the masters and the organization or reorganization of the ashrams, the moving of personnel, the masters who make their decision and go on to, to other cosmic journeys and so forth. So it does not seem like that could all occur within the next decade or so. It might, maybe it's already organized, but uh, I, f I think that the 2080, 2100 date is more attractive for me at the moment with my thinking, because in 2100, Polaris, uh, the fixed star Polaris, our pole star, aligns with the Earth's North Celestial Pole, the closest it has ever aligned with the pole. And in esoterically, Polaris, of course, is a star of direction, very important in the charts of disciples. So 2,000 odd years ago, Saturn and Jupiter made a conjunction in Pisces at the birth of Jesus in 7 BC, depending on which charts that you subscribe to. And so now in Aquarius, uh, the Christ return as the avatar of the Aquarian age, uh, it's most appropriate that that will occur while Saturn and Jupiter are conjunct uh, together in the sign of Aquarius and reminds us of the biblical saying uh, from uh, Matthew 26, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water, follow him into the house. Indeed, and this is the house of the Last Supper. And uh, DK makes the comment in Esoteric Astrology, Aquarius, the expression of this influence has been beautifully given to us in the story of the Last Supper. Christ sent his disciples into the city to find a man bearing a pitcher of water upon his shoulders. This is the symbol of the sign Aquarius, the sign in which the universality of the water of life will become a factor in human consciousness. Then we shall indeed all sit down eventually to the communion of bread and wine. He referred indirectly to the same idea when he spoke of himself as the water of life, assuaging the thirst of humanity. So this could indeed be the greatest ever renaissance in world history. When we think about it, when the unfoldment of human consciousness is considered, the return of the hierarchy for the first time in eons, this new Aquarian Renaissance promises to be the greatest in the long history of our planet. It's extraordinarily crucial, in fact, as many of you know. 
We are poised at the dawn of a new era, yet still fighting our way through the dark night of materialism. Those dark forces are currently engaged in a battle for their existence in the face of hierarchy's imminent decision to return after 2025. So what does an Aquarian Renaissance hold for humanity? Revolution, reformation, renewal, all the words of Uranus, the ruler of Aquarius, plus of course, world service, reflected by the esoteric ruler of Aquarius, Jupiter, the ruler of the second ray of love wisdom, our main ray on this planet. So an American, an Aquarian Renaissance can only really emerge when millions of people have soul contact. And of course, when all the ashrams and ray cycles of those specific ray ashrams are synchronized, just as they were in previous renaissances. So the art of music will be the next approach to the truth, DK tells us, the revelation of emerging beauty. He says that art, the art of the painter and the sculptor will follow later. New, modal new modalities of healing, light, color, sound, movement, esoteric healing, of course. A new world religion synthesizing all faiths of which the current interfaith dialogue is its seed. The restoration of the mysteries that goes hand in hand with the externalization of the master's ashrams. And of course, following that, there will be a master in each of the five planetary centers. The first initiation will be given exoterically by disciples of the Christ. The global financial system will emerge, the universal currency, barter and exchange. The fear of death will be eliminated. The diva human kingdoms will come into much closer cooperation and science, technology, nuclear fusion, magnetism, electricity, silent transport, etc., will all uh, develop and expand from where they are now. Oops, just a moment. And continuing, uh, what does an Aquarian Renaissance hold for humanity? The new group of world servers and the 10 C groups will come into their own far more powerfully in the next few hundred years. The new group of world servers is only just a century old and the 10 C groups are just that, still seeds germinating. The fourth ray soul of nations will flower, Brazil, Germany and Austria the establishment upon earth of a great station of light that I'll elaborate upon in this afternoon's um, uh, workshop session. And many of these other uh, themes as well will be covered in more detail. New cultural groups will emerge inspired by the ashrams, new educational systems, legislation for children by 2035. Though there will be a last ditch fight against materialism, a battle between the strictly mental magicians and white magicians, the initiation of Christ and Buddha by the end of the age. The Christ, of course, we know will take over the role of the Buddha. A renaissance, another renaissance in the last decade of Aquarius, which is 3557 AD to 4277 AD will usher in an era of brotherly love. Then we have the ongoing unfoldment of the science, the Antikarana, the science of social evolution, which is basically the science of invocation and evocation that will be taught in the mystery schools and um, expanded upon. So we'll touch on a few of these themes now. Um, and consider Master Serapis, the Chohan of the fourth ray of harmony through conflict. And 
he, of course, has jurisdiction over all of the arts, not just music. But in this context here, we'll just consider uh, his relationship to music. By the way, the picture in the right-hand corner there is a kind of uh, idealised, romanticised uh, picture from the David Ann Rice book on the Masters. Um, and the one down the right-hand corner is the god, the Egyptian god called Serapis, with a uh, a face of a human and a face to, of a, uh, a bull behind. So, music is expressive of a sensitive response to ideas. Uh, as Tico says, the next approach nearer to the truth. Master Serapis is the fourth Ray Chohan who oversees, who oversees art movements, evolution of music, painting and drama. He works with the diva evolution to make possible the revelation of the new music and painting. Of course, the new mystery schools coming in will also uh, uh, go more deeply into the relationship of the diva kingdom to humanity. In the eternal music of the spheres, says HPB, the perfect scale corresponding to color and number determined by vibrations of color and sound which underlies every form and guides every sound, sums up the manifested universe. This music of the spheres, DK tells us, holds all life in being. The soul on its tiny scale creates through power of sound and musical rhythm that can be imposed upon the personality life by the disciple. Groups collaborating with the hierarchy apparently make music ceaselessly the rhythm of sound, chords and notes blends with music of the hierarchy and of course Santa Kamara, who is carrying out the, the word of the planetary logos. Serapis is also called the Egyptian master, that civilization which produced much beauty and grandeur and which is still uh, obscure and mysterious to this day. Serapis's suggestions as the fourth Ray Shohan led to the League of Nations being formed after World War II in 1920. And that, of course, was the seed for the United Nations. Um, and the United Nations is the fourth Ray organization, the fourth Ray being the Ray of Humanity. Uh, and uh, it is said that DK had a hand in, in uh, helping to form the United Nations and no doubt one or two other masters besides Serapis. Art. We're told that the new art will be expressive of a sensitive response to ideas. The art of the past expressed largely man's understanding of the beauty of God's created world. And we're told that the art of, the art of today is a childish attempt to express the world of feeling, inner moods, emotional, psychological reactions. He says that they are, the, they are to the world of feeling expression what the drawings of the caveman are to the art of da Vinci. And he says the best expression uh, today, or at least when he wrote these words, uh, is in the realm of words. Uh, that is the new art is the most adequately, this is where the new art is the most ad adequately expressing itself, poetry, literature, drama, screenplays, Cultural groups. During the past three centuries, we've had group after group that has appeared and played its part, again, with regard to the various of the 49 ashrams, seven times seven rays that make up the 49 ashrams, and the ray cycles and astrological cycles that, of course, work within the ray cycles. So we have the poets of the Elizabethan age, the musicians of Germany, and of the Victorian era. We have groups of artists that formed famous schools that were the glory of Europe. And we have two famous groups, one cultural and the other political, that created the Renaissance and the French Revolution. Some of these were more, more obvious figures in history, others worked behind the scenes, of course. 
the modern humanistic movement, we are told, harkens back to the Renaissance and the divine rights of man. And we're told that the masters who have um, stimulated group activity, uh, those groups brought about revolt, formation of political parties, class warfare um, through that stimulation. But despite the stakes, humanity has grown and learned to think, hence the ultimate good is inevitable and unavoidable. Fourth race soul nations, as I mentioned before, Germany, Austria, and Brazil are the only nations given at this point with fourth race souls. Uh, India and Italy have fourth race personalities. All fourth ray entities, however, whether soul or personality, experience much conflict. So with Germany, we have the, uh, we have the Germany of the mystical poets, the writers of the Middle Ages. We are told that they will rise up again and they created the best music of all time. We have Bach, Beethoven, Brahms, Wagner, Handel, Liszt, Mendelssohn, Schumann, Strauss, etc. Mozart, of course, was born in Austria, another fourth race soul nation, and worked and traveled in Germany. We have Germany of the philosophers, Schiller, Goethe, Marx, Heidegger, Hegel, Wittgenstein, Einstein, Schopenhauer, Kant, Nietzsche, Schweitzer, Engels, Leibniz. Quite a, a, a rich tradition. Hence, during this fourth race cycle in the Aquarian Age, Germany's soul will once more flourish in the world of art, music and philosophy. Brazil's soul will also come into full play during the Aquarian Age, especially because it is the seed of the six root race that is germinating there at the moment. And currently, Brazil is undergoing much turmoil as a signal that the fourth race soul is really starting to impact upon it. Sound is still okay there, Michael? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Just so I, I know I'm not talking to myself, <laughs> that I've somehow been disconnected. Um, okay, um, the externalization of the hierarchy, the restorations of the mysteries, the esoteric education. DK states that hierarchy withdrew from contact with humanity millions of years ago. The externalization of the master's ashrams will make possible the restoration of the mysteries. The new occult schools suggested by DK will begin in their locations around the world in the coming centuries. The mysteries restored will pave the way for the first initiation to be taken exoterically. Esoteric science will blend with exoteric science in these coming centuries. They'll be re-merging with one another after various schisms in the last few centuries. The mysteries uh, of the Diva Kingdom will return. Humanity will have had past associations with the Diva Kingdom and that will be reinstated on a much higher turn of the spiral where uh, they will be invoked by servers of the race for conscious ongoing cooperation. <clears throat> Divas, sound and music will be used constructively and destructively. The mystery schools externalized will have a strong influence on the group, new group of world servers in their outer work. Also, of course, upon the esoteric portion of the new group of world servers. And of course, they will have a strong conditioning influence upon the 10 C groups, which I'll go into more later today. Group initiation. During the next 500 years, the masters will present several groups to the one initiator, Senate Komara. That means that these are groups of candidates for the third initiation. This is an extraordinary statement and has probably never happened in the history of the world before and corresponds with the other statement that I mentioned before about the station of light being established on earth, which puts humanity in a place of safety, relatively speaking, 
compared to our previous history since Atlantis. So um, all who are in these groups have taken the first initiation as have so many thousands of people in the world today. Many have taken the second initiation, particularly those who are working in fifth rate ashrams and in third rate ashrams for such disciples are distinguished by a lack of emotional emphasis. Um, and of course, right now in this world crisis, uh, my, my sense is that there are another large waves of humanity taking the first initiation or at least reversing the wheel leading to the first initiation. <clears throat> As we know, there are several kinds of reversals of the wheel, but I'm talking about the, the basic one from the mutable cross to the fixed cross. How are we going for time there, Michael? Uh, good. We got five um, minutes. Yeah, five minutes is good. Okay. So the new group of world servers, uh, we had um, a lot of stimulus uh, and generated awareness around this subject at Christmas time last year because of the new group of world service week that happens every seven years in Capricorn. And we are still uh, dealing with the effects, I think, of, of that stimulation. And we have the, um, in this uh, diagram on the left, we have the Masters of Wisdom, the planetary hierarchy in the center, the 10C groups surrounding that. Uh, they're called the trained observers, the magnetic healers, education, the new age, political organisms. Uh, religious workers, scientific servers, the psychologists uh, and astrologers, the financiers and economists, the creative workers. Did I say telepathic communicators? Well, I'll say it again anyway. And then around that next wheel, we have the United Nations and around that wheel, we have the non-governmental organizations. So, um, okay, uh, we can just go, whoops. Uh -oh. We could just briefly cover the externalized ashrams. Uh, do we have time for that? Externalization will bring an increased stimulation which will necessarily affect disciples and aspirants. This will involve a period of adjustment to this higher vibration and I think this has really started to come into effect in these last few months, these last couple of years. Um, the adjustment to increased livingness facilitated by the enunciation of certain basic statements for the guidance of disciples, aspirants and people of goodwill. The externalized ashrams will be active along four major lines, the new world religion, the gradual reorganization of the social order, an order free from oppression, persecution of minorities, materialism and pride. And number three, the public inauguration of what? initiation. The what growth is it? Of the Do we have any of what? symbolism? Any what? Um, I can hear some voices in the background there. Am, am I on? Yes, the, you were the, on. Okay, the exoteric training of disciples and of humanity in this new cycle. And the key point that DK makes in many of his books is the material goal is the defeat of totalitarianism, that evil process of the imposition of ideas. And the world is experiencing quite a bit of that at the moment and for the last five or 10 years in a, in a creeping sense. Uh, democratic and communist nations, churches everywhere uh, practice this totalitarianism in one form or another. And the defeat, DK tells us, is needed of all that infringes human free will and which keeps humanity in ignorance. Totalitarianism is the basis of evil today in all systems of government, education, in the home, community, etc. Disciples must prepare men's minds to accept the fact that the reappearance of the Christ is imminent. The masters and their groups of disciples are actively working to bring order out of chaos. We must communicate to humanity that there is a plan and that nothing can possibly arrest the working out of that plan. And that hierarchy stands as it has stood for thousands of years 
as an expression of the, uh, the accumulated wisdom of the ages. And that's particularly important to bear in mind at our stage in history uh, this year in 2020. Thank you.